What's up, y'all? Let's build a timer today. Something a little bit more app-like, definitely uh, mobile-centric, and uh, let's see how far we can get. We might go searching for some of these icons. Um, I don't know. I'm really unsure. I need to quit telling you how long the videos are going to take because I am wrong every single time. Let's get started. This timer is from Android, and I was just, um, I, I admired all the space. I just liked how it looked. I thought the colors were nice, and it looked like we might be able to get it done. <clears throat> Excuse me in one uh, little setting, at least the layout, we're not gonna build a calculator, uh, maybe over time, you know, version six or something. Okay, uh, so let's just start with timer. I'm gonna try to encapsulate this thing in a little container and we could probably even dev in mobile mode. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna try to match the comp, which means I might be making it too big. Although I think, can I shrink this? Oh, well, there we go. Maybe I'll make it in a more, more normal size. That seems a little bit more reasonable. Okay. Uh, Let's get started. I think this timer, so it's gonna ha it's gonna have a header, right? Um, and when I look at this header, this reminds me of so many things I've built before. And um, one of the one of the tricks or the corks in this is notice that this is in the center, um, but there's a button over here. So how did this get in the center with this button over here without some absolute position going on? Because if this thing is consuming space, uh, you know, like if it's got like a container right here, then all the way over here is another item. This would be offset. So you'd have to do padding left by the amount of this size or margin right some negative or or I don't know, there's all sorts of bummer ways to do it. I'm gonna make an empty node. Uh, we could even use grid template areas to just assign items to these and make it really, I think that sounds like a fun use. So, oh, here, why don't we just build it? So we get the header. We're essentially going to have uh, an H1 title in here, timer, and some sort of like sp icon span, span icon, um, oh, here, it's a snowman. Let's just go grab it here. Material icons. The more, it's not a snowman, it's a more. Here we go, more vert. I'll just go ahead and take that SVG. Oh, is there a copy SVG? No, but I think I can drag this up in here. Yeah. So grab that SVG, pop that into here. That's going to make this HTML look so confusing. I'm going to get rid of the XLNS on it and the height and, and yeah, we'll leave the view box. And then we're probably going to want to fill these with something else. But let's see. What do we get? Okay, great. All right, let's go. Okay, so let's go in here to our header. We're not really doing anything with the timer yet. I want you to set up colors. I make it sound like I don't want to set up colors. That's not the fact. I, this is probably my favorite part because I get to guess at some colors. And um, I really enjoy this. So, okay, we're going to have a surface for sure. And, and that's that dark blue one there in the background. Let's even make a hue because I just like controlling that hue. It's just so fun when it gets into that scenario. Okay, so we're, our first parameter of our HSL functional notation is its hue. The next one is the saturation. I'm gonna choose something, it's kind of blue. I can see I can see color in it and it's fairly dark. Uh, okay, so there's our surface. And before we really get going too much, let's put that in here. Let's do HTML, this is our background, sort of our surface one and we'll do our text color is our var text one which we'll make in a moment like this text one uh, hsl var hue uh, so it stays in the family uh, this time the saturation is let's see this is just for our text color probably super low barely any in there and uh, this is text for legibility let's see so we can like check our uh, lightnesses here and that's 70 70% of lightness between them. Now, now, now that's no guarantee that you're gonna have uh, an accessible color, but that's a pretty good uh, set of span of lightness there. Okay, so I'll just save that, which I think should swap the whole thing. Oh, great. Um, it's not dark enough. So here's our surface. Let's go to 10%. That looks dark enough. It is too blue. And I, mm, it's a little more blue than that. And it's a little, ooh, no, it's not. And it's a little lighter. So maybe it was lighter and not bluer. Yeah, let's do 11. Yeah, let's try 11, 11, because that's just fun to say. No, cancel. I didn't want to hit Command Q. It's so close to Command S. That's fine. Let's leave it. Okay, so in our text, that uh, I'm just going to leave it. It's not all the way white, but it's still in the family. Looks great. We're also going to need that brand color. Um, we, uh, we're not using it yet, so I'm talking about that blue. So the blue will be within this hue range. It's got to be. Its saturation is going to be really high, and its lightness is going to be really high. So we'll just try 
somewhere there for right now. And we'll build that out in a second. All right, let's get back to our header. Our header was display grid we talked about. And what we wanted to do was a grid template areas uh, that were named. And we can do that with, so grid template areas, plural. Uh, the first one here is gonna, it's gonna be like back icon. Um, or we could just say like here, oh, let's use uh, icon start. Let's use logical property naming. Icon start uh, will be three rem wide for right now. I have no idea how wide that's actually gonna need to be. We'll figure it out in a second. Three rem looks, uh, whatever. Uh, okay, three rem. Uh, the, the rest is 1FR, so this is our center title area. Oh, let's title it. Uh, title? That's... I hate naming stuff. Uh, 1FR. <laughs> Icon end. Which is also 3RIM. Great. Okay, so now that we have those named, we need to align them here. This is getting really annoying with the... Can I just pull... There, sure. And now when we're typing in here... Uh, we might pull that back in a second. Okay, so whatever, grid template areas. Uh, we're going to align items into the center. I might as well just save what we have here so we can go check it out. Our header is now a grid and a grid needs to auto flow into a row, right? Grid auto flow row, rows, row, grow, column. Flex and grid are backwards. Well, maybe not backwards is the right word to say. Oh, what happened? All right, let's check it out. So what do we have? We have our grid, we have our timer, we have our item, which doesn't know where to go. Um, and it has no height and width. Okay, it makes sense we don't see it. It's just a span with nothing in it. And plus, even though if it had, oh, it has something in it, but it's display. It's not fitting into our grid right now. Look at it, it has no width. We're gonna have to figure that one out here in a second. Okay, so anyway, here's our grid. I need to take off our uh, body layout because that is kind of, it's uh, shrink wrapping our content and it's making our display block elements not very display block. So let's just go ahead and remove that for right now, which should put us up at the top, right? And look, our element came back and we want to put this next to it. All right, this is getting kind of, I liked it when we had clear areas. Okay, um, and here we go, we'll move that right there. Sure, okay. Well, now we have our split. We have a way too big of a grid header. Is that just because that's the size of the, the natural size of this path? No, it's 24. Our H1 doesn't even have that much margin. We're definitely gonna wanna get rid of the margin. Uh, here, header and H1 is margin zero. It's also grid area. We can just go ahead and name it while we're here. Um, title. We can also specify that any uh, well, just uh, let's see, we have our uh, span icon, so it's our icon first of type is going to be in the grid area of icon start. And we can take that and pop another one in and say last of type, last of type is on icon end space. Okay, so I'm not, yeah, okay, that's, that's nice. And so, but 1FR should really be taking up more space than that. So something's up with our SVG. It's really, really strong. Oh, wow. What is happening? Nothing in here is that big, is it? Uh, um, hmm. Let's just go ahead and nip this one. So we need to do that with, let's just make a class and we need to tell this SVG how to, how to be. Well, and we needed to describe our icons anyway. So our icons, let's say inline size. Oh wait, that's not gonna work. Uh, oh yeah, it is. Um, of three rem, sure, block size, three rem. We're just gonna take a quick guess here at the beginning. Um, all right, there's our item. It looks pretty good up there in terms of size, but it is on top of our timer. It's not claiming grid end there very well. So here's our grid, which seems to be going, what? This is so wide. There's our just general wrapper. Here's our header. Is it because we don't have anything in the first span there? I don't want anything there. So I want it to be empty and I wanted our span class icon, the last one of header to be on grid icon area end. And I think it is, right? If we take it off of there, it's still in the same spot. Timer is, or the title is in. 
Okay, let's check our grid. Maybe, oh, look at this. I got a typo. Okay, good. That makes more sense now because uh, I was wondering what was happening. So we have grid template areas only defining one axis. It's not in a string. Is that the issue? No, it's naturally uh, that way. If I just do three rem, one FR, three rem, we need grid template columns to have all that fun naming. Because we're naming the tracks, not a set of areas. We're not doing a two by two. Oh, that was cool. And look at our grid picked up. Oh, nice DevTools team. I'm gonna send I'm gonna send you this clip because that was really neat to have the live reload. Um, so my live reload CSS kicked in the updated styles. The styles defined some labels and everything got invalidated and properly drawn in the updated current. Look at that, that's awesome. I'm very pumped on that. So in our icon, I'm just gonna eagerly jump into the SVG here, needs to have a fill of var. Um, oh, we're gonna need to make an icon color, icon one. So I'll pop up here, um, icon one. And if I remember right in this design, it does the opposite of what I like to do. Look at the icon is a little brighter than the text, except when it's selected. The icon is dimmer than the text here though. Okay, so we've got two different grays. We also have a hairline gray. We need to make a few grays. And let's not do icon colors then. Let's make those icons a second text color. So text color two, we'll essentially just drop it down to 80. And text color three, I don't know if we need yet, so I'm not gonna do it. And we'll use that as our icon color. So var icon two. And I thought that that would fill with uh, a light color and it didn't. Uh, so I need to target the path. Maybe even go take off some of that inline style. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. Mm, no. Oh, there's an empty path in there. Urgh, that's annoying. Okay, let's try this. Let's go to our index.html. Let's take out this empty path here. This crusty path. Let's properly format our SVG because we would have seen it if we'd done that before. We don't have a fill on there. Still not inheriting our color which is okay, because I can go into here and stay. Now that we only have the one path, I can fill it. <gasps> Gasp. It's not stroke, is it? No, what is it, Var? Oh, with that text color, doesn't it? It's text too. How long have we been doing that for? Oh man. It's okay, we found a little bit of a bug. All right, good, we, the bug we found was the empty note in there. Okay, <laughs> this stuff is hard. Um, and it's kind of fun to debug sometimes, right? Especially when I'm live on camera doing this stuff so that you guys can all watch me mess up. I know some of you out there, Josh, who's just like, ah, it's right there, didn't you see it? And it I don't know, when I'm in the moment here, everything goes, my vision is like this big. I just, I don't know, I need more practice. Anyway, okay, so here we are. We have our timer. This header already looks like it needs some padding. Let's give it some padding. Padding, padong, that should be a thing. That's just funny. Okay, there's our header. Here, oh, and our H1 needs to be text align center, and that's the direct descendant of the uh, header there, text align center. Perfect, and then I need to check out our grid here. Those are, I don't even need to change those right now. They're in the center too, and I didn't do that. So that's just because the view box is set up um, symmetrically and the icon paths inside are centered. That's really cool. So the question now also is if I expand the size of this, does it grow as well? Um, it grew the width of, the, no, it's not. Okay, that's fine. I'm happy with our header. Let's see our design comp. Excellent, is the font size even kind of close? That's funny, no, it's a little too big. Oh, but look, we're back to our big image even though I scaled it. Uh, whatever, we'll just roll with it. Uh, we do need to change the font weight here. That font weight is too much. We'll do font weight of 500. It's, it's like kind of bold. Yeah, all right, and the reason the 500 works, by the way, is because our font family, which I use in all of my demos here, is system UI. And system UI on macOS comes with a bunch of font weights, and so we can reference them with some um, fun numbers, like 500. If we wanted to use keywords, we could do that too, which would help us work in uh, with fonts that don't have as many ranges, but anyway, there's all sorts of enhancements that you can always do to your styles, right? The layers just keep adding up. All right, so, that was our header. We haven't really outlined our timer at all yet. 
And our timer. So I'm going to collapse our header. I think that's done. Icon done for now. Sure. Timer. You are display grid. And I know that because we want the block direction and we want a gap. We want like a healthy gap of something like 5 rim. And now we don't have any other children under there. We do want an HR. So I'm going to put just a horizontal rule. Um, maybe we'll turn that into a border at some point. I don't know. For right now, that's OK with me. And here, this is our keypad. Right? That's cool. And then we pretty much have like a footer after that. And it's the footer in the timer. No, the footer, the timer is an app in the view. And the footer would be in here. So we'll see if we get to the footer. Here's our keypad. There's our HR looking very sad. So our grid has squashed it. We can see our gap here. Oh, let's turn on our tools. Tools, tools. What is that color? I seriously, I just, mm, why, why? Get out of here with that color. That's actually kind of a cool punky green. I'm kind of down with that. All right, whatever. Anyway, okay. Here's our HR. We need to widen that one. And uh, let's see, we don't want to do this for all HRs on the page. We want to do it for ones inside of timer. So we'll make sure it's uh, in here. Width, 100%. And that's going to have some border issues. Yep. OK, so we'll just set border to none because we only want one side of the border. We'll do border, bottom, one pixel, solid, var. What did we make? We made it uh, text two. And uh, this one way too bright we definitely need a much more subdued border color um okay well that's not gonna let's make that a second surface because really it's sort of like a pushed back surface color so we'll say surface two and it's fine for now and this is going to be like 40 range um, and we'll say surface two we're going to use that down here we can collapse you uh collapse our root and this was for here and it's full width. That's annoying. Um, our timer has a gap, but it doesn't own any padding. Let's have that solved like that. OK, let's get our comp back up here, because we're kind of encroaching on other space. So really, the header shouldn't have had any padding, right? Is that what we're learning here? Because that needs to go edge to edge. I assume this goes to edge. Yeah, it goes to the edge right there. This is a little inset, but we'll figure that out in a second. Um, and our border looks a little too blue. I'm going to go take some hue out of it. And it's also too light. OK, there we go. 5%, 30%. All right, got to love HSL. You can kind of just eyeball your way to a nice color. Uh, the timer now has the padding. We now see, oh, I like it when that's in focus. Um, oh, we need to do this whole timer section. We skipped it. I skipped it. I got excited. I went from the header to the HR and skipped. <laughs> OK, so this is essentially what this looks like time. Uh, we're going to use the time element inside of there for the out. Hmm, the time element, the time element. Can it represent individual things? So here, HTML time element. Like, should I wrap the individual units in time or right like here or the whole thing in one time unit? Represents a specific period in time. Ooh, uh, uh, mm. time on a twenty. Yes. Cool. Okay, we're gonna use the time element along the whole thing. Time, and inside of the time element, we need some more markup. Let's pull this open. Excellent. The time element has an hours, minutes, and seconds uh, flex layout, and so time needs in this first area is my just going to use spans hmm these could be named and do i have a semantic element for this i know that i'm going to use a small inside of there um i don't think so so and i don't need a div called hours i'm going to need something to sort of delineate them from javascript later but for now i don't need to do that so let's just say span span zero zero small h Great. We'll see if I regret that choice later. Next, in v2 of this, Adam changes 
his HTML structure away from the decision he made. So we're also going to want tabular numbers, tabular, <laughs> I said that slow motion, tabular numbers. Uh, uh, and yeah, we'll get there in a second. This here, I liked it when we had like a little bit of mock data. Uh, okay, and here we'll do one, one minute, one minute, sure. Okay, and then we have this uh, delete icon, and we may or may not pull that in. We'll see if uh, icons.material has it. It looks self-explanatory, uh, vertically aligned here, align items. Okay, um, let's work on our time. Our time element. Time element came after header, came after here. Yes, okay, time. And this is, we're going to want a pretty large font size here. Let's try 4 rem. No, we're gonna want more font weight. Oh, I guess we want more because we're matching the picture. So really we could set a font scale inside of timer if we wanted to be tricky here. Here, let's do that. Font size, five rem, and then this can be one M. Cause then it is one scale of that. No, see then everything else would be like way wacky. Okay, I don't feel like doing that right now, but you could, you could do something like that if you want to. Font weight, this looks like 400. It's like still somewhere in the middle. A little thinner than what we had. I don't know if that did anything. Okay, uh, and we want this at five. We also know that this needs to be display flex. At least that's my current assumption. And I want to justify the content, justify items. All items, yeah, justify content space between. That would be edge to edge. Our design does not look edge to edge. It looks like this. Sort of. All right, we're just gonna stick with that for right now. Hey, I hit the mouse wheel or something and I just twirled. I don't like it. Um, oh, look at our border is, I don't know. Okay, so there's we're, we're losing some steam here. We also have um, that color prepared so we can make this all the same color. So we have font and properties. I usually like to do display stuff up top, but I guess right now, um, and that's just like how my brain writes this styles. I don't do that on purpose. I know there's other folks that like organize all these. Some people like to do it alphabetically. I worked with many people who did that. Okay, anyway, what are brand one? <laughs> hey, our color is wrong. I remember guessing that. It's too light. Here's our brand. Let's go to 60. Uh, and maybe that'll fix the blue. No. This one is more purple. I think we're going to have to change our hue. Hue, saturation, let's drop saturation. It's too, too, there, okay, hmm. Lightness at, let's try bumping it up. Oh, uh, 60? No, I think we need to go a calculation on this. We'll do like calc our hue plus 10. And I'm saying that because this looks like it's gone towards a purple range, let's do 20. Does that, is that not working? Oh, I haven't hit Command S, jeez. Oh, look at that. Let's do 25. Cool. All right, so there's how you can do calculations on your custom properties in HSL. Um, really fun. That was really interesting that we had to rotate it like that. I'm gonna rotate it more. That was a good choice. Okay. Oh man, interesting, plus 30 on a hue to get a nice little rotation and complementary. Um, cool, either that or the hue for this whole thing. Oh, I bet you everything's been that and I just started with 200 and I was wrong. Hey, we have an opportunity here to line up our HSL, that's cool. Um, okay, wait, I switched it to 230. I can see a little bit too much purple in here. That, oh, here, let's just take some of the saturation out of this. The surface is too saturated. Let's go to six. Cool, and it's a little lighter. Cool, and this can, you know, that's fine. That's fine, I'm happy. Okay, I'm not gonna get more sucked into colors, although I love nudging colors. Our font is still not big enough. Let's go to six. Boop. Ah, oh, that's fun. And I think we rotated too much. Let's go to 220. <laughs> Okay, I, I like it better here. Oh, watch, I'm gonna want more purple back in a second. Okay, I'm gonna rotate that out, put timer back. Okay, time. Okay, we're working on, our time element looks pretty good. Our smalls are broken, look at that. Uh, they're too big. So we'll go down here to our small elements. We'll select all the smalls that are direct descendant of time. And we will say your font size. This is a great time to use a percentage or an M. Um, I'm just gonna use percentage. That did not. <laughs> 
Uh, let's do 0.5 M. Okay. Did times were not a direct descendant of small? That's my guess here. No, they're direct descendant of span. So I'll have to say span small, span small. Here, R M works. Can we do 50%? Yes, we can, and it's essentially the same thing. Now what we want to do is, um, we have some spacing issues between our smalls and our letters, and I know that there's a fun tabular numbers value. Let's see, um, oh, font variant numeric. Tab am I gonna remember this, tabular nums? Oh, wow, I'm special. Uh, that's funny. Okay, there's lots of white space at the end of that double O. We have an H. Mm. So those are awfully, awfully, hmm. What's the best way to do that? Like, I don't want to pull in a negative number. Although, look, even in like this scenario with 23. Oh. Oh, I think we can crunch it up with some CSS. Let's test it out really quick. We could just say um, all time spans. Hey, that's fun. <laughs> time span. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, display flex. Yes. Align items bottom. Oh, wait. End. Wait. Flex end? Flex end. Yes. End is not done yet. Um, that would have been similar. Wow. Look, we dropped underneath. Oh, align items. Baseline. <laughs> Do we want a gap in here? You, I bet a bunch of people are like, why are you laughing? Um, I'm laughing because um, some font properties, oh geez, look at that. Let's do like 0.1 character, like just 10%. Oh, that's actually nice. Where's our design? Um, why I'm laughing is because, oh no, look, it's really tight. So we will just take the gap out. Uh, I'm laughing because baseline sounds magical. And it's like, oh, when would I use it? Oh, what's your use case? Yeah, every, but um, it's so hard to sit down and think of use cases for stuff when, you, when you're when you not actively just, I, anyway, there was a primo use case and that was really fun. Um, I just like finding that stuff out. So really what we can do here is we can take our small, because we've got our span now, it needs to be display flex um, with align items baseline, sick. Take our small, do an and, our little nesting here, and small and font size 50 strand, should be good. And we didn't do a gap that time, so I'm expecting to see these uh, collapse up. And I don't think we saw anything because we put an inline style there. So I'm gonna refresh, yeah. Is this too big? It is, look, that's not 50%. I think the top of the H is there, but the rest of them aren't. I mean, look, here, let's do 40%. Fun, I think it's 45, jeez. I mean, <laughs> okay, okay, it's cool. Oh, and maybe ours looks a little different because we don't have a zero zero here. And that would probably do the same thing that we see here. Okay, now the delete icon, do we have one of those in material? Uh, let's see, let's see. I think that's a Mac specific one. <gasps> Backspace, here it is. But wait, we want outline version, right? Oh man, I lost the design. Okay, um, SVG, drag into your favorite text editor. Get rid of some of the stuff you don't need. And is there another empty? Yes, there's another empty node with like a GUID on it. What is that? It's not a GUID, but it just is path data. Um, okay, great. Take that, go into here. We had another span. This one was an icon, right? Drop it in, save. Booyah, and the way that we're gonna fix that is um, icon here is going to align items into the center, right? That's what we should do, I think. Unless time will take care of it. No, time is already, oh, time is not aligning items to the center, which is fine. Actually, here, let's see, let's see. Yeah, we do want it to own here. Yeah, align items center. Woohoo! Love it. Uh, go away, don't need you. We already had our success. We are putting align items center. That is a font property and align items center cool all right uh next 
Numbers! Okay, I'm gonna use flex. I, I, that was, I think this was one of the reasons I remember sending myself the screenshot of the timer, uh, was seeing this layout and seeing the orphan down here centered made me think that uh, Flexbox was gonna be the right choice. So here, I'm gonna turn the grid back on there just because that's fun to look at. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, so we are into the numeric keypad, right? So um, is there a fun way with Emmett to do this? I can do like, what, what's the plan here anyway? I'm gonna have, uh, it's not icons, they're gonna be buttons. Am I gonna do buttons? Could pro they are interactive, they are very tappable. Oh, we've already made the mistake on some of our other interactive things to not make them buttons. So it sounds like part of our refactor here would be to go buttons. Let's, mm, let's never make these buttons. Um, I am not for right now. I don't think the transition would be difficult later. So let's do span times 10 um, with the text of the num I? No, what is the span 10? Oh no, now I've lost all the helper. 10 equals I? No. Um, oh, whatever. We'll just say one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Did I do it? Yeah. Okay. In the time it took me to maybe go look that up, we solved it already. Um, and now we're on keypad. We can close out time. Look at us. We're at 100 lines of CSS pretty much already. Um, and in here we want, I said, display grid. And we want to justify content center. And that's how we're going to get that um, in the item, the last item is going to hang out at the end there. So in here, we'll have the parent own the layout by just targeting each of the children, and say your flex basis um, is 30% or something like that. We just kind of want you to equally split up in the space, and I guess you're not going to appreciate that at all. Why are you? Oh, because your spans, your spans, and you don't do stuff like that. You need to be an inline block uh, to do anything fancy like that. No, I am wrong and don't know. Oh, what? This is a. Did I type grid on accident? I did. Whoa, that would be why flex basis doesn't work. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, and 30 is interestingly. Oh, we want to wrap. Um, and let's see, is our direction good? Yeah, because we're going to wrap. So we'll say flex wrap wrap. Flex wrap wrap. All right, uh, that's a little closer to what we were thinking about. Looks like we have a text align center issue. So we can say, um, oh, I think it actually can, I can do that from here. I can say um, place items center. Oh, place content. I'm just not even gonna mess around with that. I'll just do text align center. Oh, that makes sense that that didn't work because the boxes, um, here, look. The boxes that are made for these elements by the flex layout here are full width. So there's nowhere to push and pull this element unless we shrunk it and then aligned it, but that's just not the plan here. So we'll just text line center. Excellent. And what did we call these? These are just a span This um, inside the keypad. Okay, so well, we might as well just... Uh, this is so messy. Yeah, I'll, I'll just do this lazy um, and here this is be text line center because what I, basically what I did there is I um, I didn't want to put the styles for these buttons in with the styles for the layout because I'm pretty sure we're gonna take this out of here in a second um, there's gonna be a lot of really fun hover and stuff if we ever want to get in on these and there's just it's gonna pack up into this class so fast um, so anyway text line center um, we can give the give these a padding. Do we want to do this with padding? No, because the all well, the numbers are fixed. They are all single digit. Ooh, we probably want our our numeric as well. So we'll do um, font variant uh, font. Oh man, I just remembered it, and it, this is why I was so surprised to remember it. Font. I know it's tabular numbers at the end. Font variant. Oh no. Um, dang. It's right here. I'll just go take it. Font, variant, numeric. Oh, it's close. I just couldn't word numeric. Mm, whatever. Okay, there's that. And these, oh, these needed padding. And we decided sort of, uh, actually, I'm not going to use padding. I don't like centering with padding. It's not reliable. So instead, I want to do something 
Um, that's kind of contextual to like what I see here. Oh, look at our font size needs to blow up. A little bit smaller than the other one, which was I think six rem. So there's our font size there. Oh, that's too big. Four, nope, three. Three point five. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um. Oh, we can space these with a gap. Let's do that. Flex wrap. Yep. Yeah, I'll say gap of. Um. And it looks like is it the same gap as the row in the column? Mm, I don't know yet. Let's find out. So let's just start with something interesting like four rem. What's our font size? Three and a half rem. Oh, look at that. That was pretty close. Five rem. Nice, and we messed up our kind of alignment there. So we need to make these a little smaller, 25% because of the gap. Excellent, um, maybe smaller, that would pinch them together more. Cool, uh, more? No, I'm gonna leave flex spaces there and we'll come back to that in case we need to revisit. That layout is done, I'm gonna walk away. Great. Okay, um, are now are we gonna do the footer? We can do the floating action button, I suppose, because it looks like it's just an element inside of like a, oh, it's kind of like a footer in this element itself, like here, let's collapse time. So we can just see our structure here. Okay, so we have a header, time, HR, keypad, and a footer. We'll do a footer in here. And the footer will just have a single button uh, this is a floating action button with a play icon in it, and that should be able. We should get the outline of a play button in here. Pretty easy. Here we go. Grab the SVG, drop it up into here, and do our little ditty on it. So the reason I take off the height and the width and the view box um, is because they're not needed and to have a responsive inline SVG, you want to put less on there. You want more to be coming from CSS than the inline uh, HTML, HTML itself. Okay, uh, close that, go back into short stack here. Here is our ginormous play button. Wow. Do we have a class on that? Oh no, it's the footer. It's the footer in our timer, right. It's not very intuitive, I, I don't think. Um, display, flex, place items in the center. I don't think that's gonna work. It will if I do grid, I think. Why is it off screen? Oh, it disappeared. Okay, well, let's find out why. Like, is this because this is, no, that's, it needs a height and width from somewhere. The SVG is essentially like, I'm a view box. I don't hold any space. You didn't, you took off the height and width that you had on there. Okay, so if my footer is a uh, grid display, I can create a box that essentially will create a size for it. So I'll say grid and I'm gonna make a cell. So I'm gonna make a one column and one row, it creates one cell. And to do that, you can do grid shorthand and just specify something. So let's see, my column is one FR. No, this is my row. My row, this is where I want to set a height, I think. We'll do four rem and my column will be four rem. Huh, I don't know, we'll figure this out. Oh, that was unfortunately not successful. So if I get this fab and I say, now, I don't want to do height 100%. That's not cool. What if I just pull this up here to test? There's our play button. If I center this, uh, line not, no, justify content center. Boop. Okay, then we don't need the class, but we need the class around the SVG. So the class in between the SVG is the one that's making the mistake. So I need to take, um, I need to go into fab and give that a better layout. So let's reload, drop in here, get our timer, go to our footer, our fab element, and try to figure out, oh, this needs a height and width anyway. This is like a pretty special little item. So we'll do the aligning and the creation of the, here, we don't need this like that anymore. This grid won't be creating the cell. 
the item will be self-sized. So our fab will know its own. Uh, so this will be inline size is 4RAM and block size is 4RAM. And that should give us, and then here it even had a background, right? Oh, look, it's popping up in the right spot. The background was, oh, let's pull this up. There we go. It's our brand one. And um, our, okay, our border radius is 50%. We need to make this bigger. And there's five rim. Six, we'll try seven actually. Six, should have done it. And we will target the SVG inside of there. And this is what's going to be fun. I'm, well, let's see. With 30%, 25%, let's try 25%. Why I like this and what I was about to get, let's make sure it works, is that, um, yeah, look, it barely worked, is I think designers like to talk about sizing this way. Like the icon should be 50% the size of the circle it's in. Um, and then maybe we could set like a minimum on there. We'll see the fab is, there's its size, there's its background and border radius. So we can just say display flex and place um, items in the center. Since there's only one, I think this will work. Place content would only work if there were multiple items. So what we need to do is say uh, align items and justify content center. We want both of those on both axes to be in the center. It's not black, so let's go change its color. Um, that's gonna be in the SVG here. We'll just say, mm, we could probably, yeah, let's do it here. The color is, uh, let's be fill var text two, probably text one. Ew, uh, surface. Try surface two before surface one. No, it's gonna be surface one. Cool, awesome. And it has a nice shadow, and I like shadows. So let's do a box shadow of, uh, see nothing on the X, on the Y, let's do five pixels, that's pretty standard. Uh, on the blur, we'll start with five pixels, it's kind of a nice blur, and we'll, uh, of course, use HSL. Now, here is a pro tip, use your hue in that box shadow, and now you'll be setting a nice blue shadow on there, just like in real life. Okay, for our hue, uh, and then we want saturation to be mild, and lightness to be mild to non-existent. So that will give us a, at least a really dark hue. Um, let's see. I see it, it is a little too subtle. Uh, it needs to be offset more. I think the blur is good. You see it down there? Oh, it's a little too blue. Take out some of that saturation. Cool. I like doing my box shadows and pixels. Um, I don't know, leave a comment if you have a feeling about that. Uh, I used to do rims just because you can see I like to do rims almost everywhere, but this is like a pixel thing. Like I want the shadow to be this many pixels from there. It's not necessarily like a legibility thing. Okay, so there's our fab. Look at our blue is a little light. So there's is a little, I'm gonna nudge it. It's our brand. Ours is a little too light. So I'm gonna come back on our lightness, 5%. A little too much. Let's go see, cool, this is this is fun. Yeah, yeah, all right. Okay, enough nudging the color. Um, okay, what's next? Oh, the footer at the very bottom. Let's, okay, let's finish off with the footer. I think we can get there. Wait, what are we at in terms of time? Oh, wrong button. Illusion gone. Uh, time is 43 minutes. I'm gonna stop. That footer is not really the important part anyway. Let's see how this does in like a uh, mobile view. We did not check its responsiveness at all. Yeah, so we're gonna have to do some work in here. Um, can grab this. Oh wait, I need the oh free free form mode. Yeah, responsive mode here. Okay, so we expand. We're we in our timer, or in, yeah, in our timer here, we'd want to set a max inline size at something. Well, maybe we will, uh, and that should be I don't know. Um, max at. 50 characters. That's obviously not enough. So we'll say 75. Cool. Which will prevent us from kind of out like growing too large, just like we did in one of those past demos. Like here, if I pull this out, like that's nice. Like that shouldn't keep flowing into that space. In fact, our timer should have a cool box shadow. Um, oh, let's go to br Brum. Oh no, br um, Brum. 
shadow, uh, oh, something like that. Make a smooth shadow. Yes, this is what I want. Where's the link to direct link? Is this it? Yeah, brum. Here we go. I'll just take this one. These things are cool. See, this is the shadow here. Really deep, lots of layers. Don't want to write these by hand. Throw that on my timer. Resist the urge to refactor all of this into HSL. Mm, I'm going to do it. HSL. Don't need that comma. Don't need that comma. This becomes a slash. Hey, and I think we're done. No. Because this needs a percent. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop. Oh. Semicolon. HSL. Oh, there's a typo. Oh, yep. Too many values. Hue, oh, wait, no. Hue, saturation, lightness, slash, our percentage. Oh, we don't want a fractional percentage. We want like a full on percentage. Um, um, box shadow. Did it work if I just pasted it and I broke it? It did. That is not very fun. What was wrong with this one? Hue, saturation, oh, I see, I see. All of these, oh, that's not cool. Need a percentage. Oops, percent, percent. Aha, it has returned, and it's too dark, um, because I think these were, um, they really did need to be that subtle. Like this is 2.8, right? Like these were smaller. Okay, that's fine. I, we might be able to come back into our grid and bring this now. Cool. Um, I think that's it for right now. Uh, let's put a border on our timer. It needs a little bit of a hairline border. And I think we have one ready to go. We can say border, one pixel solid, bar surface two. Cool, and a, bo and a border radius. I just, yeah, God, I gotta soften it up just a little bit, you know? Five pixels, just a, just a little bit, sure. Okay, um, well, there you have it. We made a timer. It's kind of ready for interaction and interactivity. It could, we need an, ad an adaptive media query somewhere to, to help us shrink this when we get into a smaller constraint space because this font size is just too too much for there. Um, cool, all right, well, I hope that was interesting. I'm, I'm kind of surprised we did so good. We even went and got icons um, and it wasn't annoying. And we checked out uh, this cool tool where we have a essentially a shadow that's being cast with a, um, a, a curve, there's an easing curve that's being applied and that's why this thing looks so nice. And it will continue managing the easing curve as you tweak these values. It's really cool. Um, and then we went to these icons here, we grabbed their SVG, we pulled the SVG into an editor and we grabbed it right out and stuck it in the HTML. Looks cool. Our structure is kind of nice. We have a header and a footer and a time and a keypad. Oh, header, footer, time and keypad. We looked up the time element. There's, I think that episode was all right. Um, I hope you have fun watching these. And if you want to see something else, let me know. Uh, if you have comments, if you want to talk about what should go in version two, leave them down below. And I will see you all later. Bye. Stay healthy.